Good, so welcome everybody. I would like to talk about how to run a regression in uh, Excel. And um, the setting is as follows. There is a business school and the business school runs an intelligence test during the admission process to filter for the best students. The intelligence test is very expensive. And the big question is whether this uh, intelligence test is helpful in predicting student performance during their studies. The research question is, has the intelligence test predictive power or can the school save money by abolishing the test? So we want to answer this question by running a regression. Here you can see the regression equation. On the left hand side we have the exam score and on the right hand side alpha which uh, is the intercept and beta the slope of the regression line and the intelligence score serves as the explanatory variable. Epsilon is an error term. Before we run a regression we have to write down the pairs of hypotheses in a first step. So for the intercept, we have the following pair of hypotheses. The null hypothesis, alpha is equal to zero. And the alternative hypothesis, alpha is unequal to zero. For the slope, we come up with the following pair of hypotheses. Null hypothesis, beta is equal to zero. And alternative hypothesis, beta is unequal to zero. So in a second step, we have to determine the confidence level and the critical values. So we want to test on a 95% confidence level and we want to perform a two-sided test. So the critical T value will be equal to 1.96 or just two in case that we have enough observations. So let's have a look at the data uh, you can see here this Excel file. We have um, about 200 students in our data set. Uh, we have information about the intelligence score. This stems from the admission process. And then we also have information about the number of points scored in an exam. So in the first step, it always makes sense to visualize the data set. So let's check what kind of relationship exists between the intelligence and the number of points scored in the exam. So I mark the whole area, I include all the data we have and I insert an XY scatter diagram. So I'm using this icon here, punct XY or scatter diagram. And then I take the first one and here you can see the relationship between the intelligence and the number of points scored in the exam. In the next step it makes sense to put a label on the vertical and horizontal axis and also include a regression line. You can do that with the fast layout option which is given here and I always choose layout number 9. So, third row, third column, layout number 9. And then you can change here the title of the axis. Like here we have the intelligence score. And on the vertical axis there is the exam score. On top we can also make the regression equation a bit larger so that we can have a better look at this relationship. And I also color, color the regression line in red so that we can better see the regression line. Great. It seems to be the case that the intercept is equal to 21.95. So here 
This is the intersection of this red line with the vertical axis. When you prolong this regression line, then it would be the case that the regression line hits the vertical axis at the value of 21.95. Furthermore, the slope parameter takes a value of 0.6. So in case that the intelligence increases by one unit, then the number of points scored will increase by uh, 0.67 points. Good, so we get a first uh, impression of what the relationships look looks like. Nevertheless, we cannot conclude uh, anything with respect to our hypothesis. With respect to our hypothesis, we can only include anything when we also know the standard errors of the estimated coefficients or when we know the confidence interval and the t-statistics. Therefore, I would like to show how you can come up with the standard error, t-statistic and confidence intervals. So we have to run a regression. You can find the tool in the following area. You have to go to data, Daten, data, and then you find here a data analysis tool. Click on that one and then go to the lower part where you can find the regression toolbox. Click on OK. And then in a the first step, you have to insert all the information with respect to the input Y range. So the points scored in the exam. So include the area E6 to E206. With respect to the X range, uh, we have to plug in the intelligence variable from D6 to D206. Please be aware of the fact that I included row number 6. So I include also the cell where we have the label for the variables. Because of the fact that we included row number 6, we also have to make a check here at labels to indicate that the first row, row number, Z, row number 6, includes the label. When you press OK, then you will get the regression output. Great, so let's in the first step check here the coefficients. They have to be in line with the coefficients in the picture. So in case that you get a completely different value for these coefficients here, then something is wrong. So in the following, I'll format this table a little bit more. So I'll cut some decimal points to make it a little bit better to discuss this kind of stuff. So, some information are already known. For example, we know the R square already. Also, the R square should be the same R square as in the graph. Furthermore, you can see here the coefficients. A standard error. You can see here the T values and the lower and the upper bound of a 95% confidence interval. So, in the following, I would like to highlight how Excel is computing this confidence interval. So what is the relationship between the coefficient of 2195, the standard error, and the lower and the upper bound of this confidence interval? Let's go back to the slideshow. So how is the lower and the upper bound of a confidence interval computed? The lower bound this is the estimated alpha coefficient minus 2 times the standard error. 2 times the standard error because we want to compute a 95% confidence interval and there the critical value is equal to 2. So the lower bound, it is the estimated coefficient of 2195 minus 2 times the standard error of 1.86. So we get a lower bound of approximately 18.23. The upper bound is computed as follows. Estimated alpha coefficient plus 2 times the standard error. 
So we start with the estimated coefficient of 2195 plus two times the standard error. We end up at this value for the upper bound. In the next step, we have to check whether the claimed value, the value which is claimed in the hypothesis, is included in the confidence interval, yes or no. The lower bound is at 18, the upper bound is at 25. This implies that the zero, the claimed value, is not included in the confidence interval. Therefore, we have to reject the null hypothesis that alpha is equal to zero. The intercept of uh, 2195 is very important and should not be neglect neglected. Great. So, um, now you understand how XL is coming up with these two values for the uh, intercept. What about the two values for the lower and the upper bound of a 95% confidence interval related to the slope parameter? The confidence interval for beta is uh, computed in the same way. So the lower bound estimated beta coefficient minus two times the standard error. Here, 0.67 minus two times 0.03. So approximately the lower bound is at 0.61. The upper bound is computed in the following way. Estimated beta coefficient plus two times the standard error. So 0.67 plus two times 0.03, we end up at the value of 0.73 for the upper bound. Also here, we have to interpret the uh, confidence interval in the following way. We have to check whether the claim value from the hypothesis is, is included in the confidence interval, yes or no. The lower bound is at 0.61, the upper bound at 0.73. So the, the zero is not included in the confidence interval and therefore we have to reject that beta is equal to zero. The conclusion is the slope parameter is significantly different from zero. Intelligence is an important determinant for the subsequent study success and therefore the intelligence test should not be dropped. Good, so now you know uh, what is the relationship between coefficient, standard error, and the confidence interval, and you also know how you have to interpret the confidence interval. So in the next step, I would like to show you how the t-value is computed. Let's switch back to the, let's switch back to the Excel file. So I would like to highlight how this value of 1.86 is computed and uh, I, I would like to highlight, I'm very sorry, in the following I would like to highlight how this value of 11.8 is computed, how the t-statistic for the intercept is computed and I would also like to highlight how we have to interpret this value of 11.8. So let's go back to the slide. As an alternative to the confidence interval we also can perform a t-test. Both tests like the interpretation of the confidence interval and the t-test they should guide us into the same direction. So let's check how Excel is computing the T statistic. The T statistic is computed in the following way. Estimated coefficient minus the claimed value from the hypothesis divided by the standard error. So with respect to alpha, uh, the estimated coefficient is 21 point nine five minus the claimed value we want to find out whether uh, alpha is equal to zero or not we have claimed that in the hypothesis so we have to subtract a zero afterwards we divide by the standard error 
and hence we get here a value for the t-stat which is equal to 11.8. Good, so now we know the, how Excel is coming up with a value of 11.8 in the Excel sheet. What do we have to do with this value? We have to compare the t-stat and the critical value. Since this t-statistic of 11.8 is larger than the critical value of 2, we have to reject the hypothesis that alpha is equal to 0. So we know that alpha is unequal to 0. And as you can see, the interpretation of the confidence interval and the interpretation of the t-test guides us into the same direction. This is a very brief introduction of how we can perform a regression in Excel and how we have to interpret the regression output. Thank you very much for watching this video. Thank you very much for listening and see you in class. Bye-bye.